Welcome back everybody. Today I'm going to be showcasing the current state of this to that. I've got a few improvements that have happened since the last update and I just want to go ahead and showcase some of those changes. This is not going to be a full in-depth video, just a brief, um, brief overview of what's been, what's been changed. So once again, using the same model that was provided to me for my friend, we have unnamed high poly and low poly models. Just in a rough um, low and high poly collection structure. So what we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead and create a new bake asset and we're going to create it from the collection tank. So this is going to go ahead and search through the, um, the collection to see if there's a low collection and a high collection and automatically populate the high and the lows to the new copied collection. So you can do it based off of selection, which um, essentially is the simplified version of collection. So if I have all of the high poly objects selected, what I can do is I can build this from the selection and say, this is, this is the tank. Um, and the same thing will happen, you just have the extra step. And so there's a few different ways now to, to create collections. You can even just build it straight out, um, new bake asset and build all of the collections yourself. Um, so there's a, there's a few different ways now to create a bake asset, but let's just go ahead and build it from the collection. So there the tool went and searched for the lows and the highs based off of the parent collection name. And it went ahead and populated them into a new, new collection group under unmatched. So now the viewport is showing all red because these objects are unmatched. So let's just go ahead and set up an auto match. And just like that, all of our objects were linked together. Um, so 0, 0, 0, 0, um, 0, 10, 0, 10, so on and so forth. There's a lot of preferences you can change with the auto matcher. You can turn off require matching origins, iterate, all sorts of stuff which we can talk about later. And there's also a match selected button if your objects don't get properly matched or they aren't matched at all. And this includes floater support. So you can select the floater and then what you want it to be a floater of and hit match selected. It's a really powerful tool, but in this case, um, this to that actually, it grabbed and matched everything we needed to match. So moving forward, let's just go ahead and export this low and high poly model. And we're gonna go ahead and drop down the settings here and select our 2K PNG preset. Um, this essentially just changes the um, all of the preferences in here to a previously specified um, preset. Actually, let's turn that off. Whatever, well, let's do uh, four samples. We don't need 16. And we don't need normal OBJ and the height. And aside from that, that looks good. So let's just go ahead and open this up in Marmoset. We take a look now, we have our group created with all of our presets, with our maps all configured properly. Four samples, looks great. Let's just go ahead and give this a bake. And perfect. And you can see that this scene is also saved, so we can reuse this anytime we want. So we can go ahead and close out of that. Now that we have our bake maps, which we can go ahead and find here perfect and this was all an auto generated structure based off of those user preferences let's go ahead and open this up in painter takes a little while and perfect now we've got this loaded up and as you can see, all of our maps just got loaded into the bottom right here based off of texture set settings. Everything that we designated inside of Blender is now imported into Painter. And we have that link established with a new um, Substance Painter project declared. So let's actually go back to, well, no, let's do something in here. So say whatever, we've got something going on and we now want like rust drips off of the barrel and we realize, oh, hey, we don't have our world space normal map. Well, what we can do is we go back to our hub being Blender. We can go back to our settings, general settings, and then toggle normal OBJ. And sure, let's do a height map as well. 
So now that we've changed these settings, what we can do is open this back up in Marmoset, and this will find our previous tool bag scene, and then add on normal OBJ and height. So now if we rebake this, we get those new maps. Save, close, doesn't really matter. And then here, we can refresh in Painter. So this is gonna use the existing scene. You can see we do not have world space in there. And then let's just go ahead and hit refresh. Let it do its thing. And we go back to Painter and now we have normal OBJ. So you can see that you can change things based off of your blender and then subsequently manipulate it in Marmoset and in Painter. And so this really creates a bridge between the tools and it makes for um, really easy low to high poly baking. Some things to note are that um, I didn't really showcase it here, but this tool does work with multiple texture sets. So it will run through and find all of the proper um, texture set names based off of um, the texture set associated with it. And so all of this, um, all of this is dynamic and it's not hard coded. So if you went and then you changed your texture set name in Blender, re-exported your model and kind of went through the process again, it would match the proper textures to this. And so really this is, um, this is really dynamic and you can use it for any amount of texture sets um, and it should, um, it should work just fine. All it's doing is, is checking for those names and um, going through the process will rebuild will rebuild everything by opening in Marmoset and refreshing in Painter. Um, all of these properties can be changed and then dynamically, right? And as soon as you open them up, um, everything will get refreshed. And so there's a lot of, lot of customization with this tool, not only in the way you create bake groups um, and the way you name things, you can have objects pre-named, all sorts of stuff. You can create presets, you can save presets, edit the presets manually. Um, you can go in and you have so much customization with this tool. Um, I didn't show it, but under preferences, you can go to preference files and you can actually save all of your user preferences as a JSON file. You can go view your asset presets, um, your export preset, texture set list. So we can actually navigate to this as well. All of these maps are dynamic and you can change what's happening under the hood. So what we can do is go into this JSON file. You can change the, the tail, the usage in Painter, the usage in Marmoset, all sorts of goodies. You can even rename it in the Blender UI. There's tons of customization that is going to be available with this tool to not only fit into existing workflows, but to create new workflows as well. Um, Really excited to release this tool soon. I'm just bug fixing and uh, refactoring some stuff. But if you have any questions, concerns, feedback, please drop it in the comments below and I'd love to love to have a conversation with you. Thanks for watching.